On today's episode, we got the news, we got the starts of the week, and a lot of matchups to break down. Some very interesting, who am I going to start? Make sure you subscribe to this channel right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's playoff time. <laughs> I like it. I like the way you went. I expected something about the Thursday night game, and I'm glad you didn't go there. Let's focus on oh, the big I'm, picture, baby. I'm on Saturday, boys. <laughs> Triple header. Yeah. Yeah, just Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, right? Or do we not have Monday this week? We probably have Monday. Yeah, we 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 have Monday. We do, right? Yeah, you only don't. You, they That's they the skip Monday week. on the week eighteen. Okay. Which, for those of yeah, you the, out there that are playing on week eighteen, we will unfortunately still be <laughs> doing a show for you. But you shouldn't be playing a championship on week eighteen. Do we, we getting, have five episodes in week eighteen? Or when do we start punishing people for this? We Brooks, I we, think we have four because yeah, of New holidays. Year's Day. Oh gosh, yeah, the, it, the, we should probably take two days. Holly, for New Jolly Year's. Days. Yeah, yeah, gotta I recover. think so. Monday night is a great game. Monday is the Eagles and the Hawks, Seahawks. Oh, well, that's fun. Um, welcome in. It is playoff time. Matchup previews on today's show. We have our starts of the week. We also have a story. We do? This is news to me. I hope I'm not telling it. I hope I'm not the butt of the joke. Uh, no, I was almost the butt of the joke. and oh, I, let's I, hear I, um, I didn't know whether I'd share this because there's some nuance here. But Mike wasn't in the studio when it transpired, so I get to tell Mike this. Ah, yes. From beginning to end of what took place. Okay. Now, do you know what I'm talking about, Mike? No clue. Okay. Well, we we have always said that, uh, you know, maybe you've got a bye week. You need to prepare for the next week. Fantasy players in general, you play defense, right? You try to yes. keep quarterbacks away from an opponent that doesn't have a quarterback. You pick up the right defense. Uh, you you notice your possible opponent. Now, Jason just knows what I'm about to tell this you. This story, it's unbelievable. So I, I was hesitant to say it. Because, it better be good now, boys. <laughs> well, listen, this is what happened in our League of Record yesterday, and I want to share it because genuinely it's genius, and I hate to say that when bringing up Papa Josh. Papa Josh almost pulled off one of the most devious, evil, genius, smart, terrible moves that I have ever seen. Basically, what he was going to do is extreme wise game theory, playing the game at the complete and utter detriment of you. At the highest level. Yeah. And so, here, here is the... I'm going to set the table, Mike, so that you understand what took place yesterday. Okay. My opponent this week in our league of record has Justin Herbert. So... Had. 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 So I know that in my playoff matchup, he is going to take his shot on the waiver wire for a quarterback for this week. He also has no fab. Had no fab. At the no fab. Yeah. And I have $1 of fab. A uh, fab. So yeah. I knew that I could use my $1 to protect myself from him having Matthew Stafford. Yeah. There's that one great player on the waivers. Matthew Stafford is on the waivers. That is correct. And then I, I had some backup claims in. I had a couple spots I was going to fill up to play defense because I also have the waiver priority on him for a tie bid. So I'm I'm shooting for Matthew Stafford with my dollar. Then I was shooting for Geno Smith and um, m going from there. Here is where things get insane. Waiver wires process. Papa Josh has a buy this week. Papa Josh already has Tua Tungavailoa and Justin Fields on his roster. I look at the waiver wire. Papa Josh signed Matthew Stafford for two dollars. My dollar ended up going into the bid for Geno Smith to block Geno Smith. My opponent ends up with Joe Flacco. That's where it went. But I start thinking to myself, I go, "Why did you sign Matthew Stafford?" You you were asking me. You're like, why I was asking, he, "Why would he sign Matthew Stafford? He doesn't need him. He doesn't need to block him. It's not it's not helping. Like he wants to actually play your opponent this week. That's right. He I'm like, wants, why wouldn't you try to you know let him through? You your team is better than your opponents, and he's going to play the winner of that most likely. So he wants your opponent to win, and somehow he blocked your opponent yeah. from getting Matthew Stafford. It made no sense. So I I go out there and I look at him and I go, Josh. 
why did you sign Matthew Stafford? This makes no sense. Like, you don't need him. You're not playing this week, and his matchup sucks next week against New Orleans. And he just stares at me. And then I ask him again, and he just stares at me. And then finally, finally, I find out his purpose. And it was advanced. Next level genius. He paid the $2 for Matthew Stafford so that he could sign him to his team. I would burn my $1 of fab. Oh, now he's going to cut him? And then yeah. he will immediately <laughs> cut Matthew Stafford so my opponent can pick Matthew Stafford up. Because okay. he knew he would be blocked. Okay. So he made Andy waste his fab. He burned my fab. Okay. All because he, he wants to defeat me. He is He's leaning into his, uh, what is I say, the evil. Um, his devil ways. Yeah, his, his, his enemy of Andy mindset. Villain arc. Yeah, he's, he's leaning right. into the villain arc. And I am flabbergasted. And I can't even. That's a great move. I was going to say, I can't even complain on the grounds. It's not collusion. Mm -mm. He didn't work with the opponent for it. He just wants to beat me. He wants me to be eliminated. Now, I. Andy is able to say this story right now. Yes, for one share reason. It as yes. I just went and looked. <laughs> because uh, after that waiver. After claim, he burned my fab. After you burned your fab, your opponent did use his waiver priority to then pick someone up. So now you, Andy, I'm 11th in waiver priority, yeah. and he is 12. So you are okay if Matthew Stafford gets I dropped. wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here today if he had pulled that off. It was genius. So now if Stafford Almost. gets dropped, I can still pick him up. Can you believe that, Mike? That I, No, not really. That is an intellect that yeah, we had Josh no had idea never had shared that. with this <laughs> office. <laughs> right. We've been waiting for something yeah, like this. Just give me a sign of you know, life poking here, Poking with a stick, and it's like, wait, this is in you? Yeah, if you if you channel his brain to evil, he has advanced IQ. Channel it towards production here in the studio. Can't do anything. Can't do anything yeah. at all. Yeah. How do I use this computer? I don't. He doesn't oh, even know how. There you go. I mean, that's that is a strategy that I don't think I've ever walked through. Like, Can as, you believe that? So, look, ladies and gentlemen, there are still <laughs> things to be unturned. There are there are moves to figure out. I honestly, I, I know I was probably due to my bias not able, like it, had he pulled it off where I didn't get lucky enough with the waiver claim, my bias would not have allowed me to commend him. No. But in the moment, I or was like. Or employ him. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> mean. be like, sorry, you. You the, we've changed the code on the door. You're not welcome here. I mean, Brooks, did you uh, you heard all this transpire yesterday? Were you mind blown that Josh had this in him? Uh, a little bit, but it's Josh. <laughs> I don't know. It, yeah, but his evil genius. Yes, I think his co-manager right. had some of the brains there. I'm gonna give him a shout out. But um, okay, it, it was uh, it was quite the move, and just yeah, I had to tell the story because it was so good. It genuinely was yeah. a great, great move, and totally legal. Legal evil can that, be I mean, had. That, that is that's forty chess right there. It really was. <laughs> that's exactly <laughs> the phrase Andy used yesterday. What's funny is, oh when, yeah, let's t tell yeah. that part. Yeah. So so I I walk in the room, I hear this, and I'm like, I can't believe it. And I try to say nothing. I like leave. I leave the room, and then I, I he grab, didn't want to like praise Josh in front of him. Yeah. I, well, I I didn't <laughs> want him to know. I, it was it was just one of those things where I didn't want to like encourage him to to drop Matthew Stafford at this point I didn't know you had the the, yes. the waiver part you were just trying to stay so out I was of like, it uh, yeah I was just trying to stay out of it so I was I was leaving and I was like Andy come talk to me outside <laughs> and I go out I go dude that's a brilliant move he did nothing <laughs> wrong like that's the smartest move if he drops it like and well, then, we agreed I mean we were both like uh, yeah, oh my god he was like that was legit 4D chess yeah. so it's it's not a prescriptive thing for the future in the sense that this took an opponent who had a an injury, a waiver wire that had one replacement, uh, the opponent of the opponent who only has one dollar fab. Like this is uh, not specific, not repeatable, but it is an example of like looking at your matchups, looking at the future, looking at what their needs are, and how you can try to overcome and hurt your opponent. That is fine. That is not collusion when you are just trying to better your team by using the mechanics of the platform. It was it was genius and the yeah, exactly what you said. If you could give yourself a one percent advantage for your playoff matchup, a half a percent advantage, like there's luck involved. Let's not pretend that there's not a ton of luck involved. So anything you can stack up to help yourself, huge benefit. Had to share it. We've got some NFL news to catch you up on, and let's do it right now. 
news and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. The best part of this Papa Josh villain arc in general has been like in between his evil moves, he posts like he tweets like <laughs> yes, like he's the, the like he's the like, like he's the pope <laughs> like he's the authority on like morality and yeah. ethics and oh he's just there to encourage you and I mean, tell you how to be humble and kind and oh uh, I mean, look I mean his last tweet seeing a lot of questions on collusion it's a hundred percent. 100% acceptable to block an opponent. It is not acceptable to recruit other people. Make sure you act with <laughs> integrity. <laughs> integrity, <laughs> You villain. Um, all right, NFL news. Let's catch you up on the Thursday night game. Uh, I am going to take some responsibility here on what has transpired in the game because I, I saw the over-under was 34, and I'm like, oh, that, they're going to knock that out of the park. A few moments <laughs> later, Keenan Allen ruled out with a heel injury. And we got to yesterday we had such a long Keenan Allen debate and we and eventually we got to the point where we were like, let's just wait till tomorrow to to make a conclusion. Well, it's been made for you. If mm -hmm. there's anything to be said here, like Mike was tortured by Keenan Allen saying start me last year and then or two years ago and then yeah. all of a sudden he You're was all lucky. He was hurt. This is the advantage of knowledge. So Keenan Allen has been ruled out. I didn't see it coming. None of us did. Everybody's asking now, oh, do you just start Joshua Palmer with no issue? It's like Oh, well, there's there's issues. <laughs> it's you. Yeah, yeah. There, you, Easton Stick, the, Raiders are, D. I mean, there's a there's a question to be asked of whether you should start Palmer or Quentin Johnston. Uh, Quentin Johnston Completely. had a couple of good receptions from uh, the the hockey stick last week. They now have a little bit more rapport. Uh, I would imagine. You know. It's tough. I don't think you are excited to start any of these players. The Raiders have been susceptible on the ground, not through the air. So with Easton Stick coming in, no Keenan Allen, the defense having an easier time with these you know, second and third tier wide receivers, I just don't expect a lot of success in the passing game. Honestly, because of this, I don't expect a lot of success in the running game. I think you're going to be able to buckle down against Austin Eckler. They're one weapon left. So if you've got Austin Eckler, I... Uh, you know, you've you've got a lot of volume coming. You know he's going to touch the ball a lot, be very involved, and you're just hoping there are a million dump-offs. If he has a good fantasy game, it's because he has seven targets. If he it's doesn't get Brees seven targets. It's Hall uh, model. Yeah, exactly. He's got to do it through the air. That's that's my belief. And this news with Keenan Allen being out, to me, the, the number one like when fantasy outcome was like, I went to my waivers and checked to see if the Raiders are there. Because if I could play him tonight against a team that has nobody left, right? Um, and the Raiders have been a pretty good defense of late, um, I would, I would, I would start him. Yeah, that was the first thing you guys said coming in with the news was that yeah, Raiders D looks really good based on this information. Josh Jacobs, uh, this was a report from this morning, Brooks. Yes, sir. Uh, rap sheet said his status is very much in doubt. Okay. All the right. question then becomes. Well, this team didn't score last week. He left due to injury. If his status is very much active, if before the game we find out Josh Jacobs is giving it a go, are you just you know, closing it, your eyes and hitting the button and putting him in? I am. Yeah, Josh Jacobs has played through a lot of injuries. We we all remember the game where he missed practice um, the entire week. Looked like there was no chance he was going to play last year. I believe it was his best performance of the year. I want to say he had like 200 combined yards. He's a tough guy. If he's out there, the matchup is okay. They're going to need him, especially if Devontae Adams isn't there. I mean, maybe maybe this is a, a Chargers defense play as well. This is and not a game okay too. you're very excited about. They did announce that Aiden O'Connell is expected to start. I, it doesn't mean he plays the whole game. doesn't mean he plays next week. The real challenge here, even with the Keenan Allen news, the Josh Jacobs news, let's say Jacobs misses, both of these teams are done, right? Yeah. And that's not my favorite place for guaranteed fantasy value moving into the future. If you are working yourselves towards the Brandon Staley firing slash highest draft pick possible, does Keenan Allen feel the need to get out there next week? Does Josh Jacobs feel the need to get out there next week? Josh Jacobs is protecting, like, a new contract. Right. You know, so they they all have something to play for. If you know, if uh, if Keenan likes Brandon Staley, and usually players like their coach, you know, you're gonna try to go out there and keep your coach's job. 
I don't think these guys like Brandon Staley anymore. Then you're going to want to sit out <laughs> and be like, I'll see my new coach next year. Justin Jefferson told reporters he will play on Saturday. That's great. Okay. I will be starting him. Devon Achan, let's talk about it. He mispracticed. He is listed with a toe injury. I, this I, is the fourth Devon Achan injury situation this that, year. I guess three if you count the knee re-injury as one injury. But Most of the teams, most of the, the important skill position players seem to miss this Wednesday practice. Mostert did not practice. He never does. Um, Tyreek Hill did not practice. And Devon Achan did not practice. So I am hopeful that this is one of those like, yeah, he has a toe issue. We're just going to give him some rest. Now, to be fair uh, and integrious here, they did list with Mostert a knee slash veteran rest. They did not do slash rest with uh, Devon Achan. Because so, they'd have to say rookie rest. <laughs> right. Um, Can't do that. Bad so precedent. One of those things where it's if, just if, if you got to pay attention If he's to back it. at practice on Thursday today, I, I don't care at all about him missing Wednesday. Like, it's irrelevant. If he is a DNP today, all of a sudden, because it's a new issue with the toe, you're very worried and you need to make plans. Maybe yeah. pick up Jeff Wilson. Yeah, don't worry about Mostert. He, every single week, they've done this for Mostert all year. Which, by the way, I looked this up yesterday. Raheem Mostert, Jason, do you know the total touchdowns this year? I want to say it's like 16. 16 touchdowns on the ground for Mostert. His career, the previous eight years, I know, to somewhere out due to injury. He he had fewer than that. He had like <laughs> he had like twelve. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, it's been an absolute like uh, of steals. Like he's the number two running back. Yeah, on the year. Yeah, that's and, the greatest and by one a, of the greatest draft picks by a really good margin. Like first of all, there's a good margin between Christian McCaffrey and him, but then he is uh, well ahead of third place. It's comical because I still look at my like my dynasty team that has Raheem Mostert, and I don't look at it and see Mostert on the team and say. Because I have CMC on the team, I go. I got the top two in the league. No, I look at it like, yeah, I got a flex running back in Moster, and yet this has been. You're just still waiting for him to die. You I know, it's everybody's like, waiting the, for it. You're waiting for him to Adam Thielen, where you start so great, and you're like, this guy at this age is not going to do this. And here's sixteen weeks in, seventeen weeks in, eighteen weeks in, and he is not slowing down. And here's what's crazy: he's doing the opposite. He has three games this year with twenty carries. They're three of the last four that they've played. So it's the it's like these veteran day offs are strong are, little yeah. roots. Yes. I know. Yes. <laughs> Tyreek Hill didn't practice that one. He's had some days off as well in the past, but you know he came out and said on Twitch, at least I'm good. I'll be all right. He will be. Yeah, and I know it. His wife will say, "You're fine. Get yeah. in there." Yeah. Isaiah Pacheco did not practice. What's the latest on Pacheco? So it's the the shoulder. He's dealing with a shoulder injury of the shoulder that he had. Uh, a surgery on what last off season? Yeah, it was a labrum. This off season, so, yeah. it's uh, you have to keep an eye on it. It's very troublesome that after a full week off, you're still missing time on a Wednesday. So, I mean, I, I, McKinnon and Clyde are spot start players. I, I heard, I think it was Ian Rapport that was saying uh, they they want to see him have practices in order to to play. So this is one of those. Where based on that report, you're going to unlikely. Watch, well, I I would say today is the day. Like Thursday, if he's a DNP, then they're probably going to be making a game plan around not having him. Would be my guess because they're 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 a schemer. They you know the the Chiefs they make packages and they put things together. You know you had uh, Jarek McKinnon who was brought along slowly and he had a couple of weeks of limited practice before they even activated him because. They like to come up with game plans and say, this is how we're going to attack this offense based on the personnel we have. And so if if Pacheco is not active at practice today, then I would expect him to miss. Good news here to Mario Douglas. Return to practice on Wednesday. He is uh, two weeks out from the concussion. Hollywood Brown, this is bad news. Didn't practice. Had the whole bye week. Didn't practice. So not a good sign. Michael Wilson did return to a limited practice. I don't think there's a possibility you could play Hollywood Brown this week. The the um, there is a ten percent chance that he comes out and plays and plays well. The Niners uh, as the matchup can score a lot of points, and um, he could he could end up with fifteen fantasy points this week. But that is such a low odds bet compared to the floor of zero, and that's even if he's active. But he was 
He's been really, really bad three of the last four games. The matchup against the San Francisco 49ers could completely destroy the Cardinals. So This is the wide receiver 40 on the season. Yeah, you, you've you got to just sit him down and not worry about him this week, even if he's active. One more piece of news I'll just throw in here real quick because it, it feels like we're getting uh, conflicting reports, but Brian Robinson did not practice on Wednesday of uh, Brian – did I say his name wrong? You Brian. said Brian Robinson. Okay, Brian Robinson, yes. Yeah, so. I hope you didn't say his name wrong because no. that's who I want to not practice. Yeah. <laughs> Heal up, brother. Very, very nice, Dave. But yeah, Brian Robinson of the Manders who missed a week from a hamstring. Uh, he And they were on the bye week last week. Yes, so, sir. So, yeah, he didn't practice. But they came out and said he's playing. Well, they yeah, they said they expect him to practice. So They did? Yeah, that's, uh, the, there was reports earlier okay. in the week. Okay. That's why it was like, oh, I didn't even – like think to look into Brian Robinson because they said he's going to be good to go. But it's at this point worth noting because waivers have run. Gibson might be chilling on your waiver wire right now. Robinson could practice today, and then this is all gone. But at this point, when you're getting desperate for running backs, be on it. Yeah, I think what happened is early, like late in the bye week, early last this week, the expectation was said, yeah, we expect to get Brian Robinson back. But if he's not practicing, then eh, your expectations right. aren't always met. Interesting. Yeah, that's one you got to watch closely. My opponent in the Dynasty League has Isaiah Pacheco and Brian Robinson. <laughs> you guys oh, just need oh. – just get that rest. Yeah. Heal up, man, 100%. for your body, for your health. You, you are still living, will be paid. You are living in that place. <laughs> I need you are it. You in that place. And the, what you guys out there don't know is that when Jason's been eliminated from other leagues, all of that energy goes focused into the ones oh, he's yeah. barely in. And it's um, oh yeah, I mean it's powerful. It's very, <laughs> it's like a you know a laser where they all combine. Okay. It's very dangerous for the players actually. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com/slash/insurance. We'll take a quick break. Come back with the fantasy forecast. <laughs> Trying to find that Ron Rivera quote around Brian Robinson. I thought it was uh, attributed to Rivera. I could be wrong. No, no, no. The practice one was, but I was trying to find the one about... Uh, we expect him to play? That yeah, way? where they said they expect him to be back out here. I don't I'll, know. I'll look for it. Thank you, Brooks. Let's get into the forecast. Fantasy forecast. All right, it's time for three Saturday games and I don't have any bye weeks to tell you about because they're finally over. Which means we have a lot of matchups to talk mm -hmm. about. The Minnesota Vikings at 7-6 and six take on the 7-6 and six Cincinnati Bengals. DraftKings Sportsbook line Cincinnati minus three. The over-under is 40 and a half. This, uh, this game has question marks. Jake mm -hmm. Browning has had two consecutive top five weeks. Over 30 fantasy points. Uh, the the matchup, the defense, the Vikings, they've been on fire. The game's in Cincinnati, however. I ain't playing that game. I ain't playing that game. I just I – You're not it. playing Jake Brown. I'm not. And I, what's funny is um, we were we were talking about so, – Yeah, we leagues, have a different view on that. Right. So one of our leagues, I was going through the waiver options uh, for quarterbacks where I, I lost Justin Herbert, and it really did seem like to you that Jake Browning was the clear – obvious choice he's back to back very successful weeks mm -hmm. and I would add um two weeks ago looked great like I passed the eyeball test this last week you can't fault him for all the screen games going ham and you know 54 yard screen yeah that's making the right call yeah absolutely I mean, that, the right play but it, it also did not prove to me that he's got it now you've got this defense in the Minnesota His yards for attempt were higher this past week than the week before by the way well, well, yeah. yeah when, that's, when, oh, okay. When, that's when one that's attempt, not air yards. Never yeah, mind. Yeah, when one attempt turns 50 yards. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> um, but uh, the Minnesota Vikings defense, mercy. They've really – I mean, I, I don't remember a team w that went from like one season to the next from so bad to so good. Um, maybe it's just all Brian Flores, but genuinely um, the, the Vikings have been shutting people down. Uh, on the course of the season, they're top five against quarterbacks when you adjust for schedule – the last few weeks, I mean, the it's not the, the last few. It's a lot. The Raiders scored zero points last week. Obviously, uh, the Bears scored ten points the week before that. Denver scored twenty. Uh, New Orleans uh, the week before was looks like nineteen. It's it's uh, 
It's just they. The, I don't think that Browning can succeed against a really high level defense. The but, bet the bet on Browning is just that he has Jamar Chase and T Higgins. And he like he's surrounded by talent, so he can succeed. But I I am a, more on Jason's side that I'm nervous about Browning this week. Well, I'm nervous about Nick Mullins on the other side. I'm nervous about Justin Jefferson. I'm nervous about Addison and Hawkinson. And, like, we don't have – like, we got very disappointed with the T.J. Hawkinson performance. Now we have another quarterback. Last week, Hawkinson was 5 for 53. Eh, whatever. I mean, it's it's not what you hope for from Hawkinson. Nick Mullins, you know, you're on the road. Hostile environment, decent opponent. I'm just not that encouraged or excited about those options. I guess, Jason, you said you're playing Justin Jefferson. Yeah. I understand it. Uh, I'm not positive he's going to have a huge game. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to be really positive when you've got Nick Mullins sure. and you've got Justin Jefferson coming off of you know his second injury. But the matchup is there. The Bengals, over the last six weeks, they're averaging 30 fantasy points given up. You know that Justin Jefferson is going to be kind of the first read in this offense because he's Justin Jefferson. Looked great until he got injured last week. Um, the the injury was, you know, the MRI came back and he's going to be sore, but he's not injured. Um, I think Justin Jefferson goes out there and, you know, it's very similar to Jamar Chase. You've been successful starting Jamar Chase. You've been successful starting Garrett Wilson the majority of times. Not every week. The floor is very low when you've got a backup quarterback, but... The majority of times, these players have gotten it done. Um, in this situation, in this matchup, you've got Justin Jefferson on one side and Jamar Chase on the other, but the matchup is so much better, um, you know, for, for the, Vikings, for the yeah. Vikings to play against the the Bengals defense that just hasn't really looked like the last few years. That's a very low over-under in Cincinnati's favorite in this one as well. Joe Mixon's been getting it done on the ground. I definitely have Cincinnati winning this ball game. Uh, I don't know if you guys are on the other side of that coin, but Joe Mixon, the RB5 since week seven, gets every opportunity. Madison seems unlikely to play, didn't practice. Ty Chandler and company would get the opportunity. I think Ty Chandler's – I think he's a good start. I think that he will be uh, a workhorse usage of running back. The players behind him would be – what, in Wong Wu and C.J. Ham, these guys are just – they're not going to get very many attempts. Ty Chandler can get it done in the passing game, and he is an absolute burner where you give him 15-plus opportunities, it, your chance of one of those ripping off for a huge chunk play, maybe even, if we're lucky enough, a touchdown. Uh, so I, I think that Chandler's – assume this is only if Madison doesn't play – the trend is that I I don't expect Madison to play, so I think that Chandler is in a very good spot. Addison and Higgins, are they starts, sits? Uh, I have much more confidence in Higgins man. than I do Addison. I would agree with that. Addison right now going to become the I, – I think he'll be the third read in this offense for Mullins, and that's a little scary to me. If Justin Jefferson is there and Hawkinson's got his role, you know, last week you had um, – Addison had two – catches for 27 yards yeah, the week uh, prior he had 39 yards the week prior he had 44 yards it's just that's all Dobbs though so I, I'm not saying you're wrong but it's like we it's the confidence is just is it is a complete unknown of what will what will Mullins do with this trio of of passing weapons that he has I, I think, less than Cousins yeah I think in the end <laughs> sure for sure in the end I I believe that this game is is pretty straightforward that you're going to start Joe Mixon. You're going to start Jamar Chase. I would personally start Justin Jefferson and TJ Hawkinson. Those are like the ends. And then you've just got to make decisions based on your roster, whether you're willing to throw in T. Higgins or Jordan Addison. And I'm probably looking somewhere else. Like you said, Andy, it's a low over under, two backup quarterbacks, you know, second or third targets in their offense. I, I would prefer to look elsewhere. Let's move on. Pittsburgh 7-6, and six, Colts 7-6, and six, DraftKings Sportsbook line, Indianapolis minus one and a half at home. Over-under is 42 points. Both teams co currently holding the final wild-card spots for the AFC. We already know that Kenny Pickett's not going to be available. Mitchell Trubisky. Oh, hero. <laughs> he was the quarterback eight. Yeah. He played like nice the quarterback play, Mike. 50. Oh. Oh, that's so he ridiculous. Was, 
He did not deserve that. He no, bomb- he, did not. he bombled his way to QB eight. <laughs> he was terrible, and uh, he got you guys the buy, right? Played no, uh, shut up. No. <laughs> uh, he didn't. He did not. We don't need it. Destiny yeah, well, doesn't I, need a buy. I mean, it, it it was not his fault. He tried to get it to yeah, us. Mike so Evans. Pittsburgh's lost three of four. They look real bad with Mitchell Trubisky. The Colts. Gardner Minshew throws the ball a ton. Michael Pittman is a must start every single week. Mm-hmm. Josh Downs has been a disappointment. I think you take him off the probably have better options is what I'm saying. Josh Downs just hasn't gotten it done. Neither has George Pickens, who, you know, now his complaints are drawing the ire of Mike Tomlin, uh, who's finally frustrated with those. Oh, did he finally get there? You guys didn't see that? I did not. I mean, he had been throughout the season when he, was, when he was asked about George Pickens. It was kind of, ah, I, like, I want my players to have that fire. Yeah, it's it changed. Be, oh, we, we, we have we <laughs> yeah. moved on? Yeah, he sees what everyone else is seeing now. And oh, he, he basically boy. just came out and said, look, it's a problem when it's not solutions-oriented anymore. And nothing he's doing now is trying to to make things better or create a solution. And so Pickens, see you later. Josh Downs, no thanks. We about to Claypool here? Always. Pickens <laughs> is always one blow of the wind away oh. from a Claypool. Uh, but let's get to the, the bigger questions in this game, which is uh, – you know, I think Deontay Johnson's a wide receiver three to flex. Yeah, that's fine. I think that's fine. And yep. then Zach Moss has had a ton of opportunities. Let's remember last week had a, a 10-yard touchdown run on a questionable holding call. Got called back. So it, it impacted him. But you look for opportunities, don't you? I mean, 22 and 21 the last two weeks. I'm, I'm uh, in. Yeah, I, I do want to point out Deontay Johnson um, was not on the injury report Tuesday, was a did not participate – um, for a knee injury on Wednesday, so you do need to monitor that. Deontay okay. Johnson seems He's like he's been oh. sitting. Yeah, I, is it a, a new injury or a I, same injury? I think it is new. I will see if I can find more information. But I I saw a he's report doing of, that to to you know pay attention. Okay. Yeah, I I know last week the exact same thing happened for Deontay Johnson, but it's a good point because last week Deontay Johnson was not on the injury report. Well, he missed practice. He should have been on the injury report. <laughs> yeah. Um. Maybe it was the week before. I could be mistaken. Jalen Warren, Zach Moss. Uh, what are you doing there? Jalen, Harris, Moss. Of the, I would play Moss of all of them. Even though the uh, Colts defense a much better running matchup, yeah. do you have any confidence in Warren with the opportunities going down? I mean, I'm, I have more confidence in, in Najee. The, the new regime seems to prefer him uh, over Jalen Warren. They're both fine because the, the Colts – on the season, thirty second, so they are dead last against running backs. So they will they will give up points, but it's uh, how exactly is it divvied up? Najee's sitting at about sixteen opportunities per game. I I like I, I'm okay with Najee. Warren I think is a bit more sketchy. You just you have to get that one big play, and then between the three of them, uh, Zach Moss, you know, twenty two, twenty one opportunities. It didn't pan out. But I, I'm more confident in this matchup for Moss. Man, not. I mean, the last matchup against Cincinnati was great for Moss. And what's crazy is he's not just had a lot of opportunities, which which he has. You know, plus twenty in both weeks. Right. But he's had valuable opportunities. Um, he had both weeks two carries inside the five, nine carries combined inside the ten. Like he's had really valuable touches that. He just hasn't been getting it done, which is shocking considering how talented I believe this right. player is. Yeah, I mean you he's just he's you gotta be so excited. Um but he's gonna he's gonna make sure to play his way to getting Jonathan Taylor back on that field <laughs> quick. Um I would rather I think I would rather play Najee. Over Moss? O- over Moss. They, they they are very, very similar here to me. They're high volume players, both with decent matchups. But the matchup against the Colts is maybe the best in football for running backs. Them or Carolina. Pat Fryermuth, any confidence with Mitchell Trubisky? Uh, if Deontay Johnson is out for some reason, if that happens by the end of the week, I'll be more confident. But otherwise, no. Usually when um, usually when Mitchell Trubisky has played with a full allotment of weapons, Deontay Johnson has a very healthy target share. Last two weeks for Fryermuth, three for 29, three for 18. I'd be trying to find somebody else. Yeah, I agree. Like Mo Alley Cox, you know, <laughs> who has like seven catches on the year. No, I wouldn't do that. Denver seven and six, Detroit nine and four. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Detroit minus four. Over under is forty eight. And um, 
you know, Sean Payton and the the Broncos, they have won six of seven games. They keep getting it done. Cortland Sutton keeps scoring touchdowns. Javante Williams is averaging 17.6 opportunities per game. There's kind of a core group that you can start on the Denver side, and that's, um, you know, those three guys. Russ, I think, is a uh, a streamer. I agree. Yeah. Uh, but Sutton is is in. Mm-hmm. Javante is in, and I don't really think there's big discussions. I mean, the, the Lions' defense has been struggling, in particular against quarterbacks and wide receivers. But yeah, in general, they're, they're still they they've been struggling for themselves against running backs as well. They are still a tough defense against running backs, but their whole defense is starting to collapse. So I am fine with all these players. I am so weirdly disappointed in Javante Williams. This was the time where he was supposed to get everything together, and his opportunities have been there. I mean, you look at, you you know, you just said since the bye week. Since the bye week, he is. Why don't you read his yards per attempt? Yeah, so uh, his yards per attempt since the bye week, 3.8, 3.4, 3.6, 3.5, 3.9. He has averaged, um, looks like, 20 opportunities a game. That is a number that guarantees fantasy success and his you know three of those four games six fantasy points eight fantasy points eight fantasy points like and then and then this is a bad matchup against Detroit he's not like a you have to start Javante I think he is a let's look like I would Najee. start Najee over Javante without Moss. question Moss as well what about Warren no I would go Javante over Warren. Zeke Zeke that's Zeke what I was for sure ask. that's against Kansas City the Chiefs yeah, I would still go Zeke. Okay. He's, he was like 90% of their offense. Jameer Gibbs on the other side. Guess what, folks? I just found this out. Since week seven, he's the running back three in fantasy football. He's been a revelation. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Jameer. I, felt, I mean, felt so dumb. The uh, weeks seven through 11 really padded that up. Good. What's, <laughs> what's really, Good. What's really uh, helpful for him lately is, even in surprising fashion, like twice against Chicago, they have found themselves down big. And so when they're down, it's not the David Montgomery show. It's the Jameer Gibbs show. It's the we've got to throw, we've got to get the explosive, you know, uh, playmaker in the two-minute drill. Uh, and so this he's also, is – Yeah, he's had red zone attempts too. Yeah, and so um, it's really a matter of how do you see the game going in order to dictate – whether it's more David Montgomery or whether whether it's more Jameer Gibbs. You know, if if the Lions end up dominating this game and win the game, you know, 30 to 12, I think that's a David Montgomery game. So, Andy, you're the best at at picking that's, how games go. Like picking the script, the game script of the Lions right now is a fool's errand. Yeah. Well, I, I'll say this. I think uh, you know, they're favored, they're at home, they're in a dome. I'm I don't want to mess around with Jared Goff right now against this Broncos defense, but Everybody else that you've been starting, you start. Um, you know, Gibbs, Montgomery, Amon Ra, and Laporta. I was going to ask you how you felt about Montgomery at this point in the year. I think both of those guys are just automatic plays right now. Yeah, Laporta is absolutely in. Advanced Joseph defenses are terrible against tight end, um, even even when they're good in general. Um, the Denver Broncos, I, I just can't believe the turnaround. They are a good team, and I – I think I think they win the division. I think they take it over the Chiefs. What? If they can win okay. this game, if they can win this right, game. lay it out. Which I think is fair, right? <laughs> oh man. Do you think they could win this game? Sure. Yes. Okay, let's just I give mean, let's yes, just give I, them the let's okay. give them the W. I pretty much say could on any game in okay. the NFL, but, but yeah, I, I think the next week is the New England Patriots. Okay, hold on. Let's say they win this game. That's 8 okay. and 6. Right. Okay. Then Patriots. they're 9 and 6. Okay. The next game after that is the Los Angeles Chargers. Okay, they're no, ten. They're ten and six. Yeah, the easy. next game after that is the Las Vegas Raiders. Eleven and six. Oh my goodness. That's what I mean. Like they could win oh out. Good. The so rest eleven of the and six. Where Where are the Chiefs right now? Uh, the Chiefs I know are one game ahead of the Broncos in record. One. I believe that is the Chiefs are eight and five. Oh my gosh. Eight and five. Who's got the tiebreaker? Um, because they don't play each other again. So they we we know the head to head. Let's see. Looking at it, Denver won in weeks. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Kansas City beat They split Denver. it, right? Yes, they split So then we need, what, strength of schedule? No, division oh, record. Oh, division record, yeah. yeah. Also, uh, to be they... fair, <laughs> I'm looking at the Chiefs' schedule. Yeah. The Patriots. Okay, 9-5. The five. Raiders. Yeah. The Bengals. And the Chargers. 
Okay, so they're twelve and five. Okay, they, they so, win the division. Yeah, that, it looks like looks like easy sledding for these two but teams. It, okay, you, you, what you should have done is just said they're going to make the playoffs because that would have been a home run. Yeah, the Broncos, even with the resurgence, still a negative point differential. Seventy. Well, when you give up seventy <laughs> to know. the Dolphins, it's still, I know. It's still very funny to All be right. seven and six, and you have you have a negative scoring differential. It's not great. The Chicago Bears Sunday night. Or sorry, Sunday games. We're moving on. Five and eight Bears against the eight and five Browns. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Cleveland minus three. The over under is thirty eight and a half. Joe Flacco has been named a starter for the rest of the year. What an opportunity for him! Cleveland is the fifth seed right now. Chicago's won three of four. Wait, wait, is this true? How Which? are they one game behind the Packers for the wild card? Because that's how records work. Yeah, but they're five and eight. Let's see. So the the Packers are the, the Packers are six and seven, and they're in the wild card. That I don't have in front of me. Well, I mean, it, they. I'll pull that up. They're six and seven. Hey. Everybody's still in it. Yeah, I mean, the Bucks are leading the division. In I believe the Bears yeah, could make the playoffs. The Packers are holding on to the seventh spot at six and seven right I now. I believe I heard. I know I heard this. I believe it is true. That 22 teams in the NFL right now are either in the playoffs or one game out of the playoffs. Yeah, that's, that one extra spot changed things a lot. The seventh seed. What? Yeah. yeah, crazy. That's insane. Okay, I, I should never have questioned a Kyle stat or a Bet stat, but that just blew my mind. Because Chicago's 5-8. and eight. The Browns, with Flacco, have the number one pass rate in the NFL. I mean, he went right from doing it for the Jets, and now it's all happening on the Browns. Do they call running plays and he just doesn't do them? Maybe. Like, I can't imagine every team. Is he so charming that he just arrives and everybody's like, oh, just throw I it. don't know that it's charming, or he just, when they call in the run, he looks over and he says, mm -mm. what are you going to do about it? I'm out here. I'm old. You're over there. And I'm throwing the ball. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to throw. <laughs> he checks out of every run. Yeah. I mean. What? Like, what'd you see there, Joe? Yeah, it wasn't good for the run. Like, Joe, there was five guys on was five guys in the box. Not looking good. Not, Not looking, for me. No. Yeah. So look, Joe Flacco is a Joe, you threw into triple coverage. <laughs> I made the best read. <laughs> he is a streaming option. He really is. Okay. It's not a good one. It's a scary one. What? But it could be good. If you had a really good friend. Uh huh. Who had Let's to call him Schmike. <laughs> <laughs> who had to play either Jared Goff. Oh man. Joe Flacco or Jake Browning in a what you would call a must win game. Okay. I know this my answer. This is the worst question that has ever been brought up on the show. You're telling me. I, know I my have answer. my answer. I have my answer. Right, Hold on. Write it down here. Because what do we got? So the Bears right now on the I know season, what I would do in your shoes. The Bears are or in Schmike's shoes. The Bears, yeah, these are not my shoes, which are stunning sneakers. Uh, the Bears fifth against quarterbacks. We just went over the 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 Vikings, who are uh, what fourth against quarterbacks, or the Broncos, who are third <laughs> against right, okay. quarterbacks. So this is great Let's news. Turn All right. around. So All right. the three yeah, options yeah. are awesome, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, who do we got? Who do we got? Golf, yeah. golf. Okay, that's that's where I'm leaning. As we both wrote golf. You have three bad matchups, and you've got one really good. Offense. offense yes yeah exactly yes. that's that's where i've uh, been leaning of it God. will be a mistake he's, but he's, that is what we do <laughs> he's at least he's at home he's in a dome and home in a dome and over the last couple of weeks last week aside jared goff has looked terrible and yet still managed to come through right around that and, and if you think about the process you go through the process of looking at um, you know, not results, but process of these three guys, and there isn't a clear process winner. So, if the, at that point you go, well, so now what could I live with? If Joe Flacco has the best game and you start Goff, it's like, uh, okay, whatever. How right. could I know? But if Goff had the best game, and you start a Flacco or a Browning in a tough matchup, you're gonna go, what an idiot! Yeah, I'm, uh, cons I'm a, considering just a, just benching all of them. Sure, That's, you can't make the avoid wrong call. negative yeah. points. Yeah. It's a 10-point difference in the over-under over of those two games. That's yeah. what I'd be looking at, too. Uh, in this Cleveland game, like I said, Joe Flacco might be a streaming option. He has Amari Cooper and David Njoku, who dominated last week. But he also makes mistakes. They also have a defense that is, um, you know, I know that they've been a little bit shaky. They weren't shaky last week. They put up good fantasy points against Jacksonville at home. 
it's an advantage that they're at home. It's an advantage that, uh, you know, they make a Denzel Ward back and Miles Garrett's getting healthier. So to me, there's a there's a storyline here where it's about it's like twenty four to ten, right? And um, in that world, Joe Flacco doesn't have to throw as much, but you know, Amari Cooper season high in targets. I think you play him, David Njoku. You got to play him. So, yeah, and looking at the, the running backs, yeah, that's where I was going to go. You got two injured guys. Jerome Ford was limited with a wrist, and I think the the report was in fact very. Glad Jerome Ford did not break his wrist. That that seem I mean that's great, but that seems like we almost we were very close to a, a really bad injury. Cream Hunt didn't practice. His, I feel like yeah. he's not <laughs> he's not been good either. He's good when he you give him the ball. He scored a touchdown. Yeah, always he's good around the end zone. Yeah, but he didn't practice on Wednesday. I feel he's like Lindale he's Lindale White now. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. He has the lowest elusive rating among every running back in football with fifty plus carries. That's unless you're around the five. Yeah. He no, gets I, it I done, agree. Man. He does get it done around the five. Uh, Justin Fields, we talked about him yesterday. Jason's hungry for more candidate. I still think the matchup is brutal. I mean, I, I think your floor for, for Fields is low, low, low this week. I completely agree. Not your, that he can't get it done. Your floor is is 10 fantasy points uh, because if he gets a couple of turnovers, uh, he'll rush the ball. Like he's going to have 50 plus rushing yards. So the baseline will be there. It's really a matter of can he protect it from turning the ball over. I think he'll have a couple of touchdowns and, and um, uh, you know, I'm, it's I'm crazy hopeful because Detroit was the two matchups he dominated. Yeah, so you brought that up, but in between was a good defense on the road, and he was 24th at the position. Mm hmm. I mean, you know, it's it's tough. Obviously, uh, he he was great against Denver, but that was when Denver's defense was still. Uh, very suspect earlier in the year and, you know, TBD. But last year, he went on a heater down the stretch. I mean, he won people fantasy championships in big ways, and that was against um, some good defenses as well. So uh, I'm, I'm very – this is a telling game, and it's a dicey start, but I think that there are a lot of fantasy assets that I would still start him over this week. DJ Moore, of course, you play him. The running backs, make it brief. Deonta if, Foreman. Okay. If you, if you need to play one, it's Deonta Foreman. The The matchup is right around the middle, so it, it could be better, could be worse. Uh, but it, Foreman went right back to being the, the primary guy. Okay. Tampa Bay at 6-7, and seven, taking on the 6-7 and seven Packers. Apparently that is the record of playoff teams. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Green Bay minus three and a half at home at Lambeau. Over-under is 42. Slightly different than the brady Rodgers matchup of days of old. We've got the Baker-Love matchup. Both teams fighting to stay alive. You love that for motivation. Uh, you know, Mike Evans, yes, last please. week you play him. I mean, last week was not good, but you play him. Yeah. You barely missed a touchdown. He's been great all year. And Tampa's, uh, you know, the, the, this matchup really is one that I want a piece of. I think that this game hits the over. It's only at 42. But yeah, I'm with you. Well, I was looking at some of the over-unders yesterday, trying to find one that jumped out, and I did bet this one as an over. Yeah. Um, Jordan Love. I like Jordan Love. Uh, we'll talk about him in a little bit. He's been much better at home than on the road, and Tampa is a pure, pure pass funnel defense. Mm -hmm. You cannot, can't run on him. And you sure can throw on them. I believe Desmond Ritter has proven that. If we have more con uh, consolidation at the wide receiver position for Green Bay, uh, Dontavian Wicks didn't practice with the ankle. He may miss. Christian Watson didn't practice with the hamstring. He may miss. If we continue to narrow this down, Dobbs and Reed, are they both locks? I think they're both yeah. players you want to start this week. I would personally start them in the order of Reed, then Dobbs, but... Both are in most lineups where I've got either. Beyond that, you have just kind of dart throws. I mean, we talked about Malik Heath. He scored last week, but he only had two catches or two targets. You also have, um, I can't pronounce his name, but Torre, mm -hmm. who had four targets, doubled the targets of Heath. Both players will get opportunities in this one. Aaron Jones, well, limited. Uh, Mike, did you want to say something I about the wideouts? Well, no, it was not the wideout, but a pass catcher of Tucker Craft mm -hmm. against this Bucks defense. I think I would start like if it's not Dobbs or Reed 
I might go to Tucker Craft. He had the, the second most routes run on the team the last two weeks. They uh, they took what they were doing, um, you know, with, with the other rookie, and then just like, hey, you rookie, now you know, now you're our guy. So I, I think that in in this world of the the tight end position is very difficult this weekend in particular if you don't just have one of the 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 locked in starters and I and Tucker Craft feels like a a pretty good punt play. Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, I, and should I say Patrick Taylor? Because is there a chance that both those guys don't play? Yeah, I'm not going to start either one. Um, Aaron Jones obviously is coming back off of an injury that he's been struggling with. That's if he plays. Mm -hmm. AJ Dillon is AJ Dillon, who's one of his weaknesses just sucks, and he couldn't match up worse against the type of defense yeah. that the Bucks are. Although I will say, um, I, I need to look. Uh, is Vita Vea? He he was a little he, banged up and injured, so um, that that makes a huge difference. I mean, he is a big reason why you can't run on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So I'll try to look that up. No, he's he's not at practice. Neither is Chris Godwin. Toe injury did not practice Wednesday. Yeah, for Vita Vea. So uh, monitor that. It does open things up. I I still would prefer to not play a Green Bay uh, running back, but obviously that that matters. I think on the other side, it's Rashad White, and Mike Evans, and you end the the story. Yeah, I don't think you talk about the Bucks anymore. I love a short, sweet story. Houston seven and six, Tennessee's five and eight. Levis v. Mills, maybe the neck is back. <laughs> that would be Davis Mills' neck. Yes, Davis Mills. It's, it's one of the longest it's a, necks. It's, a, it's it's a specimen. It's long, it's like but a, it's not skinny. No, it's a it's a large tree trunk. It is. <laughs> Yeah. Bail out. And who's it? Glennon? <laughs> Glennon? Glennon's another one. Yeah. With, uh, this, yeah his his is, is frail and giraffe-like, though. Yeah. This one, what is it to you, Jay? The, this it's one. It's kind of like a thicker. It's, just, it's girthy, you know? Oh, yeah. There <laughs> so, it is. Uh, his neck. His neck. It's girthy. not skinny. No. no. So, CJ Stroud, we're not expecting Hard Stroud. to find a shirt. It's hard to get the head through so, gonna the neck need hole. Going to need the buttons on that one. More of a tank top guy. Um, where are we with uh, C.J. Stroud? Uh, didn't practice didn't, on Wednesday. I, yeah, I'm not expecting him to play, but we've been getting him back but, quick. Yeah, we, we we have. I mean, if if the good news for C.J. Stroud, if you have him on your fantasy team, is it's not a question. If if he plays, Stroud's in. Mm -hmm. Like I I would have no concerns putting him back out, but we need more information to see if he's actually going to play. Will Levis, some people wondering if this is a, a guy you need to start looking at in the streaming category. I mean, we've had a lot of unexpected streaming success from players like Sam Howell, Will Levis last week. He's not afraid to chuck the ball downfield. DeAndre Hopkins was dominant. The matchup against the Texans, this is a great one. The matchup is there a world where Levis should be above Flacco in your in in taking a chance? This yes, week? and the but the but to me the the world is based upon C.J. Stroud. I believe the right. reason they are such a good matchup for quarterbacks is because Stroud has got this offense humming. They're going to stay in the games. They're going to take leads. They're going to come back. You've got a pass to catch up. If Davis Mills is the quarterback, which as of right now, that is my expectation. Um, you know, We saw Derek Carr come back from concussion, but he was early in the week progressing and at practice. And you know, Right now, C.J. Stroud has been missing practice. So if Stroud misses, I'm not as interested in Levis, and it changes the dichotomy of how this game script goes. Derrick Henry against Davis Mills is going to be a much better play than Derrick Henry against C.J. Stroud, and vice versa for Tajay Spears. Yeah, and, and on the other side, you have so many questions because of Mills. Like, confidence level, like Nico Collins says he hopes to play this week, according to their beat writer Aaron Wilson. So if he plays... He's been good, but he oh, doesn't have man. Stroud. And he would like be there is a world where it's Stroud and Nico this week. Like you could snap your fingers, and that could both, both of those situations could happen. Yeah, if and Nico, yes, I, I guess you put Nico out there, but that is gonna man sketch town. It's Big sketch town. Time. If Nico has, if Nico's active, I would have a really, really, really hard time benching him. If I have a different option, but if he's active, I'm gonna have a really hard time <laughs> starting him. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> obviously, yes. Is there a middle between start and sit that he could live in? Like a, a purgatorious no. start sits pretty binary. If you have um 
a, a, a same tier player as Nico Collins, I would choose that other player in the for reaggravation of a reaggravated calf injury. <laughs> for reaggravation of a reaggravation. Yeah, he's already he's already he's sounds so like aggravated. sketch down to me. Yeah, it's like an angry rhino that calf. I would just um, I'd love to have somebody else to play. That is for sure. Devin Singletary has been getting all of the opportunity. He got a the big one last week, and I watched this very closely because it's torture for my team. They gave him the goal line. Like, Devin Singletary just got, like, a normal goal line carry last week, and he scored, which Damian Pierce has scored on the goal line, but it's about a one for 20 is how it feels this year. Uh, is Devin Singletary off your board if it's Davis Mills? Because this is a vulnerable Titans defense, especially over the last six weeks against the run. They've had some bad performances. Uh, I'd say not completely off. Like Pierce is gone, right? Uh, off the off of potential plays. No, I'm just saying like Pierce is not an option for anybody. But no. Devin Singletary, maybe. It's so difficult because you have the week that Pierce is back, or I don't remember if it's the week or the second week. But two weeks ago, Singletary nine opportunities, running back thirty three, then back up to sixteen opportunities. So it's oh, and he's running so I, much better than Pierce. I, yeah. Singletary looks good as a player. Okay, Singletary or A.J. Dillon? Singletary. Singletary. Singletary or Jarek McKinnon? Singletary. McKinnon for oh, me. Oh, man. Uh, I'll go McKinnon with no uh, Yeah, yeah with assuming no Pacheco. no Pacheco, obviously. You know, Papa Josh is really torturing me. What's he doing now? now? Every day this week, I'm going to have to refresh to see, right before our waivers go through, whether Matthew Stafford got dropped. Mm -hmm. Every dang day. He was talking about. Dropping them, taking you out to a camping trip, all expense paid. <laughs> okay. No, I'm joking. I'm okay. Joking. Um, you play DeAndre Hopkins for sure. It's not only – it's a revenge game. Yeah. Uh, Will Levis – like, I don't know if you saw Hopkins' comments all week. He was talking to – I did, yeah. Um, Des Bryant about the fact that, like, no teams wanted him except for the Patriots and the Titans. He wanted to go where he was wanted, and that he's played with a lot of quarterbacks and they have a player in Will Levis, which I agree with. I mean, like, uh -huh. I – I'm genuinely a Will Levis fan. Will Levis has flashed. He has shown that maybe he could be the future quarterback. I don't know if it will come true, but he's got the arm for it, which is saying something compared to, you know, all the other middling quarterbacks. He can make throws that even if he's less consistent, not as skilled, isn't as good at reading the defense as Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett could never be right. Will Levis because he he doesn't have the physical ability. Will Levis can work on his accuracy, work on how he reads a defense, work on those things. Kenny Pickett can't work out enough to get the arm that Will Levis it's has. It's such a good point. Like, I'd, I'd rather have Levis than Pickett as an NFL franchise. Yeah, me too. And so, I, I'm, you know, I, I, in the playoffs, I'm not willing to roll Will Levis out there. I mean, if you lost Herbert and you're up against it, you can, Flacco, light, you can light a candle. Levis. Are you guys all going Flacco over Levis? Uh, I would. I would go I think Flacco, go Flacco. The matchup, yeah, it's, it's, it's on the Levis side, but it's – the, the stat of they're pass heavy. Flacco is going to throw, and the Titans, while Kareem Hunt is a is a good player when when they get inside the five or whatever, when they get inside the five for the Titans, Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I'm saying. For, oh, gotcha. Like, comparing gotcha, Flacco, yeah. it's when they get inside the five. The Titans, it's, it's always it's going Derek to be Derrick Henry yeah. time, and maybe you get that one play action on second down, and the random tight end scores, but. More than likely, they're going to keep going with. We Derek need. Henry. I think we we learned talking through this. We need CJ Stroud back. Come on back, CJ. Yes, we baby. need you back. Uh, Brevin Jordan. Uh, uh, I believe Dalton Schultz is did. practicing he in practiced. full. He, he'll be yeah. a play. So Brevin Jordan is. See you later. I mean, you're not starting Brevin Jordan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Darren Waller. Breaking hey. news. Hey, designated to return and will practice today. That's fun. So there you go. Get the the Waller do, do Wallerus. Would you start the doctor? No, I wouldn't. I don't want to no. talk about the doctor. No, no. Do, wait, wait a, on C.J. Stroud, and then, and then make choices for Nico and and the doctor. Does yeah. a does a Wallerus enjoy cutlets? And Noah Brown. I'm just. I'm still. <laughs> I see what you're yeah. thinking there. Sorry, I'm hungry. Probably. Who doesn't? Devito throwing some cutlets yeah. his way. <laughs> Did you see they had um, Devito's agent? Oh yeah. This and he is... nobody knows what this means. Did you know that? What, Even the agent doesn't know what this means. What the like the Italian? Yeah, this whole like forget about it. Like I mean, this whole the the finger uh 
It's like the hand wag. Yeah. yeah. None of, nobody can tell you what it's it just, means. And yet everybody knows it's just kind of like, I think it just means down. like, yeah, it's a way of talking. It means what, Jay? Hands. I think it just means like uh, Italian. Uh, it means Italian. Uh, like, uh, I don't know. Like, oh, it's delicious. Almost like a chef's uh, kiss. I don't know. Nobody, nobody knows. knows. I was going to say his agent's like, yeah, it Dec- means different things for different people. His agent is, is a riot. A wild character. Such a smart move marketing wise just wait you think he's like dressing up like this sure you don't i want to look at that agent four months ago was he did he look just like us <laughs> and now he's wearing a fedora and a pinstripe i'm just saying if that's the case it's smart <laughs> it's he's becoming a fan favorite it's Man. smart when things are going well the moment that things turn and <laughs> and you're still doing that shtick it will not work. It's like uh, remember Lynn Sanity in New York. Now they got oh, yeah. now they've got Tommy DeVito. Um, by the way, Godwin didn't practice today either. Right, Chris Godwin. Oh, so Michael, he, he might. Michael, oh, Michael Evans, come on, be big. <laughs> He's not. That's not his problem. He'll be big. Just don't drop as many passes as he always does. Yeah. Um. Okay. The Jets, five and eight. The Dolphins, nine and four. The DK Sportsbook line, Miami minus eight and a half. Over under is 37. This line has changed tremendously. Miami beat them 34 13 in week 12. Miami's at home. Tyreek Hill situation, Devon Achan situation. We talked about them earlier in the news. Achan mispracticed. We, do we have a report today yet? Nope, not yet. Because they're East Coast. Um, Achan. I was I was a little here, – here's what I was going to say, or I said earlier in the week. I was a little surprised at the utilization of HN on the ground last week. I thought it was low. It was like seven opportunities, 21 for Mostert. I was shocked, mm-hmm. especially like the second goal line opportunity. We've seen like HN mixed into those opportunities in that situation. Now, makes me wonder, was he dealing with the toe injury during this game and all of a sudden that is why he wasn't on the field as That's much? That's fair. So you have to monitor that. Mostert's a lock in this game. 100%. The Jets are a very vulnerable defense on the ground, and a chance a lock if he's active. Mm-hmm. Tyreek Hill, you play him. It, the matchup's terrible, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, you just play him. You're going to have to play Tyreek Hill, um, and you probably will play Waddle as yes, well. Waddle had a great Waddle. game against the Jets last time around. But like I'm, You it, asked that one yesterday, and he's the biggest question mark to me. He is. Against the Jets in Week 12, he had eight targets, eight receptions, 114 yards, was the wide receiver 16. So you know he can get it done. Now, there is some concern here in addition to um, the Jets and the fact that they shut down wide receivers about the weather. 20-mile-an-hour winds, no, sustained 35-mile-an-hour gusts. We, we talked about the weather a little bit last week. Rain, again, rain does not affect passing game by itself. Rain, when it comes with a storm that is windy, has a massive effect. Uh, when winds are above 50 miles an hour, we won't know it now. You just got to check later. But like Tua, like I'm not starting Tua. I, I, I looked at Tua's game log compared to a lot of other players. Like if you're looking yeah, you at were asking about Howell Sam and Tua. Howell or Tua, it's it's no question. It's it, it, it should be Sam Howell. Sam Howell has pretty much had like one game since week three or four where he hasn't scored 20 fantasy points, whereas about half of Tua's games are bad. Fields uh, or Tua? Fields. I yeah. think they both have a bad floor. I don't know how high Tua's ceiling really is in a matchup against the Jets with a somewhat banged up Tyree Kill. We've seen him struggle recently. Uh, he didn't score 10 fantasy points last week against the Titans. Uh, two weeks before that, he didn't score 10 fantasy points against these Jets. So are you benching Waddle based on the analysis of Tua? And the fact that the Jets the Jets give up on the year 13.7 fantasy points per game schedule adjusted to the wide receiver. That is insane. I think it's probably more difficult to bench Jalen Waddle. You know, a couple weeks ago, like I said, Tua had 7.8 fantasy points, but that was the same week where Waddle did have a good fantasy output. Tyler Lockett against the Eagles or Waddle? Oh, that one's interesting. I'll take uh, Lockett. I, I think I would go Lockett there. Drake J- London against the Panthers. I think I'd go Drake London. Man, Jalen Waddle last year was the wide receiver seven. Do you know what he is right now? I would guess twenty. Yeah, that's where I would guess twenty eight. Yeah. So maybe take the seven out of your mind. Yeah, yeah, and start looking at it um, matchups, like you said. Brees Hall, you play him. Yep. Garrett Wilson, you play him. Yep. We're done. That's the end of that the matchup. Jets are so easy. Yeah. 
to beat. Is that what you're? A- actually, no. this would be my almost upset if if Ooh. I got a uh, man. I think it's very possible as well. Eight and a half is ridiculous. Yeah, but it might. You just might not be able to move the ball on on Miami. That's. But isn't Xavier Howard banged up again? Do we have? I know Kyle's on a airplane somewhere. We'll check him out. I think Xavier Howard might be banged up. And uh, DeAndre Hopkins uh, destroyed Jalen Ramsey last week. So, all right, you let me know, Brooks. We'll move on to the. Damon Howard did not participate yeah. in Wednesday's practice with a hip injury. That makes me want to think about. Mm. <laughs> it's too late. Yeah. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. My start of the week at quarterback is Russell Wilson. Russell. Well, sure. And the uh, soon to be eleven and six or uh, <laughs> Denver Broncos. Look, they play Detroit. It's not always flashy. Russ gets it done. I like the fact he throws it downfield. Um, you know, he's been sixteen plus points in all but one game this year in six point leagues, which is like a baseline for you. You know, Sutton's going to score, and De- Detroit's defense is like the best matchup for quarterbacks right now. So I'm going to go Russ. Uh, I'm going to go with. Jordan Love off of a real masterful performance on Monday Night uh, Football. It was a poo-poo Picasso. <laughs> he was atrocious, and he hasn't been as good on the road. But looking at this week, I, I do think at home at Lambeau, where he's been good, where he's averaging 19 fantasy points a game, where he's averaging 37 passing attempts per game, and he's got a matchup against the Bucks. He's still the quarterback nine on the course of the season. The Buccaneers are allowing 7.7 yards per attempt. That's tied for third highest in the NFL. And since week eight, Tampa Bay is 29th at schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Just look at Desmond Ritter. He went hamburglar on them this last week. And Desmond Ritter is, you know, he's Desmond Ritter. Right. So I think you can play Jordan Love in the in week one of the playoffs. I'm going Matty Stafford against the Manders. Yes. He is on fire. QB seven, eight, and five. Those are the rules. And then the matchup is delightful. The Manders, they are on pace to allow the second most passing touchdowns ever and they're also allowing the third highest uh yards per attempt for any team over the last decade the the weapons are healthy Stafford's in a great spot so I wanted to bring this up on on Stafford I think that Stafford is the most important fantasy asset this year for like he is on the year what he's going to do in the playoffs everyone is picking him up to play him he is either going to come through and win people championships or he's going to be the reason people leave Uh, okay like he is and and I'm on the side that believes in him. I, I think with Cooper Cup, with Puka Nakua, with Kyron Williams, he's going to dominate through the playoffs. TBD, but he is he's going to be the reason people win or lose championships. I think the the counterpoint to that would be the guy that I have as the number one running back this week. My start of the week, Kyron Williams against Washington. Both could be true. Both could be true. Um, this is this is the matchup you want. This is a player that gets. 90 plus percent of snaps he's had 22 26 and 29 opportunities and Washington is 31st against running backs it's not look this is a this was a layup that's why I'm making the call I think he's number one on the week I think he's going to win a lot of people their playoff matchup yeah and I I don't think that that's um, mutually exclusive from Stafford I mean Stafford's been Mm -hmm. top 10 three weeks in a row Kyron's been the number one number nine and number 18 running back those same weeks so uh, I would start both of them my running back start of the week Najee Harris at oh, Indianapolis, boy. look, if I can get 16 and a half opportunities per game, I know he's not flashy, but if I can get that against Indianapolis in a game that I think could hit the over, not everyone could be a sexy start. Owl knows that, right? Uh, teams are running on the Colts <laughs> at the fifth highest rate in the means. NFL. Did you it just call, call him ugly? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, now okay. you understand? Yeah. No, I mean, okay. I you, mean, you, you did. Could. Yeah, all right. You told the truth. Yeah, I mean, wow. this is I, an important I love segment. you, Al. I didn't say nothing. I love him as a human, just not like his aesthetics. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, he's a this close friend. This is so friend. unnecessary. No, I, he's a close friend of mine. I'm just Boston. saying he can't be sexy um, because of how he looks. But look, the Indianapolis. Which is offensive. How he looks yeah. is super offensive yeah. to me and anyone that looks at him. But the Colts. Are they rank thirty first in schedule adjusted fantasy oh, points man. allowed to the running? You know, backs. you two look kind of similar. Did you they, know that? What I've never oh, been man. told that in my life. Look at me. Okay, now let's see Al yeah, here now go to on the right 
totally different. Now, what we hat? couldn't look. Wait, the hat? We couldn't, oh. we couldn't, we couldn't look <laughs> further. Out. Hold on, take your glasses off. Yeah, we got to get. Wait, no, no, no. We got. Oh, oh. those. Are, yeah, those are shades. Uh, just glasses off. Bo- bo- glasses off, boys. Yeah, you've okay. never been. Yeah, w- yeah. one Wait, of you. Wait, Jason, ugly. how'd you get in the back so fast? <laughs> no, no, no. One of you's <laughs> ugly. One of you's beautiful. I'm super handsome and. <laughs> And my point here is that Al yeah, looks. Yeah, who's your start of the week? My my point is that Al looks like the Indianapolis Colts run defense. Okay, visually, which is terrible. Uh, who, who's your running back start of Just the week? Just from the bleachers. <laughs> Just. A man walking down the yeah. street that you hit with a brick. Yeah, I mean, a stray. he's just trying to go to work, uh, and he caught a stray. Uh, I'll take the running back on the other side. I'm going to go with Zach Moss. Wow, you, this you, is the third time in a row he's been in this, hasn't mm-hmm. he? And well, he failed the last this, two. This is how you get but it But my done, dude, man. Yeah, it's Jason loves him. Uh, Jason, you said if you could get 16 and a half opportunities, how about over 20 opportunities? Is he <clears> playing <throat> against the Colts? No, he um, – well, kind of. Uh, <laughs> but it's just – the opportunities are great. It hasn't come through. But the last two weeks for the Steelers – James Conner, running back five. Zeke Elliott, running back one. The You can get it done at the running back position against the Steelers. And I think that this Zach Moss will bounce back and have a good week. DK Metcalf against the Philadelphia Eagles is my start of the week at wide receiver. The Eagles' secondary is a punching bag. They have, they're on pace to allow 267 receptions to wide receivers. That would be the most in the history of the NFL. They're on pace to allow 30 receiving touchdowns. That is the most in the history of the NFL. Uh, DK Metcalf, you know, people were hesitant to start him against Dallas, who's a good defense, and then he's just bigger, stronger, faster. Philadelphia is going to have a just terrible time trying to stop DK Metcalf. If I were them, I would try to get him upset. That's all I would try to do. I would take the Draymond. Did you see the the – report from Shanahan that they basically tried like they, to get him upset yeah they said hey whoever I can't remember what the like not a huge reward but it's just like a, basically a kudos whoever gets DK Metcalf fired up we're gonna be really happy about it no they have to go dream on green get him to yes. throw a punch and get him off the field because otherwise he's gonna be I mean he Problem. could score three yeah. times against Philadelphia uh, I don't care if it's Drew Locke or Geno it'll probably be Geno but um I just think DK is a, a smash start and I love your player Jason yeah, I'm going with DeAndre Hopkins uh, against Houston. Hopkins, he went off in the second half of Monday Night Football uh, against Miami this last week, and he is the apple of Will Levis's eye. He is the apple of the yeah. banana rama, no, as they say. You saw that. You yeah, saw that no, coming, yeah, huh, Mike? Yeah. Uh, look, since Will Levis took over in week eight, 28% targets per route run. That number is awesome. 2.47 yards per route run. That number is awesome. He – has more targets, He DeAndre Hopkins has more targets, 107, than the rest of the Tennessee wide receivers combined with 106 during that time. Um, and over the last five weeks, the Texas defense has morphed into a clear pass funnel. They're 28th at scheduled just fantasy points to wide receivers. We just saw what Garrett Wilson did with Zach Wells, tore him up last week. I do hope C.J. Stroud is there. I think that pushes uh, DeAndre Hopkins higher. But even without C.J. Stroud, uh, DeAndre Hopkins should be a good play this week, my start of the week. And I'm going with Odell Beckham Jr. Mm. against the Jacksonville Jaguars on Sunday night. Last week, 10 targets, 4 for 97 with a touchdown. And it's there is a direct correlation that has been brought up and pointed out. When Odell Beckham is not on the injury report, he's been fantastic. So as far as I know, not currently on the injury report. We th- that That is a TBD. But make sure he's healthy. And then the Jaguars, 27th in schedule adjusted points to the wide receiver. There's they Their secondary is atrocious. So I, I expect Beckham and Zay Flowers to have good games. Let's go from that TBD to TMB. Trey T- McBride, T-Mick baby. TMB? Um, so wait, your star of the week is yeah, TMB? baby! Welcome what? aboard! What? I knew it would make you happy, Mike. Tight end one, baby. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. It is. It's, I am will feeling be. the season now. It will be a Are Merry Christmas. It? Yes. Yeah. Trey McBride against San Francisco. I want you to have confidence coming off the bye with the mess that is the Cardinals, the mess that is the game line. Just put Trey McBride out there. He is um, He's going to be there everything. I don't think Hollywood's playing. He's their number one wide receiver. So you play the number one wide receiver for Kyler Murray, and you play him this week despite the fact the matchup's not great. I think it's going to be a big week. Have confidence. Put him in there. And he's I'm going. Great. 
I'm going with uh, Sam Laporta off a bad game. He's playing against Denver, a, a, a defense that has gotten much, much better. They have improved over the second half of the season, but they still don't guard tight ends. They are 30th in schedule adjusted fantasy points to tight ends, 30th in tight end receptions allowed, 31st in tight end receiving yards allowed. This is a Vance Joseph truth for his entire coaching career, no matter which franchise he goes to. His defenses don't guard tight ends. Sam Laporta is maybe having the best fantasy rookie tight end season of all time. In PPR leagues, he's averaging 13.6 fantasy points per game. That is second only to 1961 Mike Decker. Very nice. Uh, I mentioned it's a very difficult week for low-level tight ends. That's why I want to bring up Logan Thomas. It's not. I don't think it's a fantastic play, but here are the case, here's the case for streaming him. The over-under, we're sitting at 49 points. That's great. Washington is averaging over 43 pass attempts this year with Sam Howell throwing all the time. And then, you know, the Rams, 31st, schedule adjusted points to the position. Isaiah likely last week, two weeks ago, it was the Browns tight ends with 13 targets and a touchdown combined. So if you are if you're looking at uh, who you are starting and you have just no confidence in them, Logan Thomas has a chance. All right. That is it for Starts of the Week. Thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high-performing fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on the Boom Boom Kicker, me and my 101 butt did some mm, kicking of my right. own. <clears throat> Living the Boom Boom journey, putting kickers on a gurney. This job is not meant for such noble class. A simple peasant wanted to get his fill. This chump was a Buffalo Bill. So I opened a can and whooped some Tyler Bass. That's, that's my favorite one. Yeah. That's hey. my favorite one of all time. You guys finally we, we wrote had, something intelligent. Yeah. We've had like 13 or 14 stinkers in a row. That I'm, was, I'm peaking right now. That fellas. was, that was, that was right perfect. Time. Tyler Bass, everybody. Mm. All right. <laughs> Final reminder here before we close the show down tomorrow, we've got the uh, matchups in the fantasy face off the wheel of shame. Uh, yours truly will spin that and the foot clan out there. Go to footclangiveaway.com. We're giving away a, a free signed uh, Travis Etienne yeah, jer Jersey and a swag pack, a bunch of fantasy footballers gear, all available for free uh, for a lucky winner at footclangiveaway.com. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for joining us. Al, you're beautiful to me. You're beautiful on the inside. Thank you. Just on the inside. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.